Hola friends, welcome to the Medicine, Marriage and Money YouTube channel, the only channel for physicians who want to achieve marital interdependence and financial freedom together. On this channel, you will learn how to show up as the best version of yourself so that you can love intentionally and build a more financially savvy relationship with your spouse. And I am your host, a physician mom, a doctor's wife, a Gottman leader, a certified life and marriage coach, Dr. Kate Mangona. Welcome, bienvenidos. Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to the other, the next episode of Medicine, Marriage, and Money. And today we'll be talking about child care, child care and date nights, child care and couples trips, child care in general. Okay. I get this excuse all the time from people who love excuses, right? My husband and I attended a a function for Kata, uh, my my second child's school. Okay, on Saturday night, it was like the parents' night out. We were all supposed to get together at this local brewery and hang out, and many of us did. I would say maybe five of the families out of I don't even know how many kids are in our class, twenty kids. But the most common excuse on the invite of people not coming is because they didn't have childcare. Let me just tell you, preface this with, we got this invite over a month ago. If childcare is not the reason you're spending time alone with your spouse every week, we have a problem because guess what? You are the only person who, who should, or I mean, I guess not really can, other people can do this, but other people can cuddle with your spouse. Other people can have intimate connections with your spouse. Do you want that to happen or do you want it to be you? You get to decide. Other people can watch your children for you. That doesn't mean you're a bad mother or you're a bad parent. Other people watch your children every day, all day long at school, every day, all day long at daycare. Uh, nobody watches them while they sleep unless you sit up and stare at them all night long, which I do know people, mothers with children with medical conditions, some of them do sleep right next to them, make sure they don't have the seizure or sleep right next to them in case they have whatever it is, right? Uh, hypoglycemia. So do, is that you? Is that your child? What's your excuse? And I'm not saying that the people who didn't come to this gathering or function all like maybe, maybe some of them didn't want to come and that was their excuse. Maybe some of the babysitters did cancel at the very last minute, but they had a month y'all and you have the rest of your life to find childcare. It is not that hard. There is somebody in your neighborhood. There's somebody in your city. There's probably thousands of people in your city. If you come from a big enough one, there's probably a million in my city that would be willing to watch my children for money and not just willing, but actually enjoy it. Um, I was able to find my magical nanny. Now I'll say magical unicorn nanny, but there are so many magical unicorn nannies. I know so many friends with magical unicorn nannies. I was able to find her within one week at the beginning of COVID last year. I would say during July or August, so several months into COVID. I was able to find her when my au pair decided she was too depressed during COVID to stay with us, which was fine. But I found my nanny within a week because I was determined, I was motivated, and I had to, right? I was like, well, I have to continue working. Victor has to continue working. Not that we had to, we wanted to. I didn't want to be that full-time, stay full-time mom. I just, I didn't want to do that. Um, I had obligations. I had uh, personal fulfillment to go down that route. Now, do I sometimes think, oh, maybe I could be? Yes, of course. But 
That's besides the point. So I found childcare and there were so many people lined up the door after I put an application out on the Facebook, on my neighborhood groups. I put the application out. I had a ton of people apply and then come to my virtual interview sessions. So let me give you some tips from one married mother to another. Here are five tips of how to have more intimacy, more connection in your relationship. Number one, build a list of babysitters. Build a list of two to four trustworthy babysitters. They can be family members, but they don't have to be. I don't have family who lives in town. My parents don't live in town. My in-laws don't live in town. I have cousins that live like 30 to 40 minutes away, but I'm typically not going to go drive 40 minutes to an hour in traffic Saturday nights to drop them off. And we just, it's not the arrangement we have. So I collected a list of three. I have three off the top of my head. I know I can call at any point and ask them to come babysit. And if they weren't reliable or if they were often busy, I'd have three more. But these are the three people that really cover me every single weekend, every single either Friday or Saturday night, whichever I need. And sometimes Saturday morning, y'all, I had my babysitter come over at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, (laughs) 6 a.m. Because she's not only a babysitter, she also has to do hair and makeup. And we had a family photo shoot and I had her do our all of the hair of the females in the family, all four of us. And my makeup. And then she went back home and then she came back in the night. Some of these people cook. Some of these people organize. Make the list. There are so many people in your city who would love to take care of your family. You're like, oh, my kids are crazy. They're neurodivergent. They have learning disabilities. They're obstinate. They don't listen. Guess what? If you are listening to the podcast, I guarantee you, your kids are not that bad. I guarantee you, the parent you are, if you are listening to this, the amount you care, the amount you invest into your relationships already and into your personal growth, your kids are probably amazing. You are amazing. They're all good inside. A lot of these babysitters are people who are looking for jobs, might not have families like you in their life all the time, right? They might not have high achievers to look up to. They might not have models like my nanny. When she comes to work and works for me, she is always asking me and my husband for advice. Not that she needs it, but she loves it. She knows and surrounds herself with us and with other people in her community that elevate her relationship, her kids. She's got four kids. She sends them all to the best schools that she is capable of. She makes sure they have after school activities that they're not messing around on the street, right? So what I'm saying is there are people in your neighborhood, your city who want to help you. They may be working at a school that's not so amazing. I will tell you, one of my babysitters works at a school right now that most of the kids cuss her out on a daily basis. And I'm talking about second graders, y'all, second graders cussing her out, coming to school, smelling like the latest drugs, okay? There are people who are, I'm not even going to go on, but you can just imagine what it might be like teaching at this school. There are people like that looking for a family like you to help with whatever. Okay. So that's number one, create the list. Number two is to actually just plan the date nights, put them on your calendar, two to four a night. I mean, a month, (laughs) don't don't go crazy, not two, two to four a month. Okay, put them on your calendar and just keep it simple. Just get your husband's calendar, your wife's calendar, your uh, significant other's calendar, mesh it with yours, figure out what days are available. For us, it's more simple just to go with the Saturday, right? It's just easiest that way. I know most Saturdays I'm not working. Some Saturdays I am, like every fifth or sixth I may be. Um, but he always keeps it free. I always try and keep it free. Uh, if, we, if we schedule guys' nights or uh, girls' nights or girl or couples' nights, We'll try to schedule them. Well, sometimes we schedule them on our date nights. That's fine if it's if it's a couple's event. But if it's just the guys or just the girls, we'll try and schedule those on the other days. Unless it's an abs like you know a 40th birthday party, I've got to attend. Just schedule it. Put it on the calendar. Step three: go on one to two couples vacations a year. Okay. <laughs> 
Go on one to two couples vacations a year. Start with one. Just start with one. Start with a weekend. Start with a vacation if you are really worried or hesitant. And, and what are you afraid or hesitant of? That would be the next question, right? Is, is there something holding you back? Um, I know for me, it used to be just fear of that entitlement when I would ask my parents or his parents, like, do you want to do this? Like, is this, is this something only entitled people do is go on couples? No. People who understand the value of couples only vacations go on couples only vacations. You're at a different level in your thinking. Your mindset is elevated because you know the importance in, of a strong, committed marriage for your children. Your children see this and then they model it. They look for a partner or, or uh, who's like you. They honestly, they do that you become their normal. That's number three. So one, build a list. Two, plan the dates. Three, plan the couple's only vacations. Four, on a daily basis, do you kiss? Do you kiss in the morning and at night before you go to sleep? Do you snuggle? Do you embrace? Do you hug? Do that once, once a day. And it only has to take three seconds. That's it. It could be holding their hand. It could be dancing together in the kitchen. It could be getting crazy. Or it could just be the peck on the lips as you run out the door or when you come home. So my last tip, tip number five, and this is a huge one, a hugely important tip. This will change everything. Think more positive thoughts about your spouse than negative thoughts. Think more positive thoughts than negative thoughts. Evaluate the narrative you're telling yourself when your spouse is with you. Evaluate the stories, the movies you're playing in your head about your spouse when you're at work or when you're with them, when you're unhappy, when you're sad, when they're not feeding you or filling your anticipatory needs buckets, right? Because you're like, oh, well, should they know? Shouldn't they know? No. It doesn't matter you've told them a hundred times. It doesn't matter you've been married 20 years. They might not never know. What's important to you is not important to them. Okay. Recount these thoughts. Are they more positive and more negative? And who are you venting to? Are you venting to your friends or your family that are going to tell you, oh yeah, they shouldn't be saying that. They can't be talking to you like that. Oh, you don't take that. Right? Are you venting to those types of people who are feeding into that anger and resentment? Or are you just venting to your friend? Oh, you know, you know, you know, they love you. You know, he loves you. Who are you venting to? Watch out. Or are you venting to a coach? Right? Which is not really venting. It's actually, you know, moving yourself forward. These thoughts that you have in your head will ultimately create your reality because how you think affects how you feel and how you feel determines what actions you take and your actions and inactions will create your life. The re this reality will serve as an example for your children. I will say this again, your normal becomes their normal. Want them to marry someone loving? Do you want them to marry somebody kind? Do you want them to marry somebody supportive? What about honest? What about authentic? They will marry somebody like you. So if you are complaining and you are angry and you are upset and you are stewing and you are resentful and you are worried all the time and overwhelmed and upset that your spouse isn't filling your needs buckets, that's what they will be. You need to be the person. If you want your child to marry someone loving, kind, strong, brave, supportive, honest, and authentic, be that person. They will model you and then they will attract those people into your life. So if you take those five steps, you are on the train, okay? On the train towards, towards more joy, towards more calm, towards more connection. Okay? And it starts with what? Childcare. <laughs> For me, it started with childcare. I had to get the childcare lined up. And it's easy. It can be simple. The hardest part is that point number five, y'all. Think more positive thoughts than negative.
about your spouse. Start with yourself. Maybe you can evaluate your own thoughts in your head about yourself. So my five tips from one married mother to another, and I specifically made this episode the day after Mother's Day to tell you, happy Mother's Day. How did it go for you? Did you get what you wanted? Did you do what you wanted? Were you waiting for somebody to cook for you? Or were you waiting for somebody to clean up for you? Were you upset? Did you ask for what you needed? I asked for two hours alone so that I could work on my parenting PowerPoint, which I'm going to give in an hour to you, to where I work. <laughs> I didn't really, well, I did ask for the photo shoot on Saturday. But what did you need? Do you need to take a day off of kids or did you want to spend your day with kids? Reevaluate. How was it for you? And what are you going to do next year? Remember, every day is practice. You don't have to wait till Mother's Day. So with these five tips, I'm just going to reiterate them one more time. Number one, build a list of two to four trustworthy babysitters or family members who would love to care for your children. Number two, plan two to four date nights a month. Keep it simple. Don't worry about doing anything crazy. Just mark the date on both your calendars. Number three, go on one to two couples only vacations a year. Doesn't matter where or how long, just do it. Just do it. Your children will thank you later. Number four, dance together, kiss, snuggle, embrace each other daily. You can't outsource that. You can't outsource super sexy time, puppy, snuggle, puppy party, party time with your spouse. I guess some of you could, but do you want to? Probably not. Not if you're listening to this podcast, Medicine, Marriage, and Money, or this YouTube channel, Medicine, Marriage, and Money. No. And think more positive thoughts than negative. With that, I hope some feelings, some emotions came up. I would like you to evaluate what those were. Ask yourself, remember, all data is good data. Did anything, any of those five points ring, ring anything visceral up in your body? Did it make you want to cry, vomit, laugh? What? All data is good data. Just evaluate. Okay, evaluate. And then. What are you going to do from here? Some, some of my five best tips from one married mama to the next. I hope you had an amazing Mother's Day. If you didn't, have one tomorrow. Have one next weekend. Take it. Do it. Stop hoping, right? Hoping is not really action. Doing is action. Figure out how you want to show up for yourself, loving, joyful, empowered. Find it, harness it, live it. Happy Mother's Day, my friends. This day after Mother's Day. And I release you to the world. Please spread positivity and kindness and authenticity into this world. And if somebody else you know really needs to hear this message, please share it with them. You could be paying it forward. I would super appreciate it if you subscribed. Subscribe, like, share, left me a review. So much love, my friends, to you and your spouse. If you are finding the concepts I teach in these episodes useful and want more in-depth and personalized support for your relationship, consider this your invitation to join me in creating the most connected and intimate relationship with your spouse that you could dream of. Go to www.medicine.com marriageandmoney.com right now and download my 18-page medical marriage survival guide and workbook at no cost to you. I also have a six-day marriage challenge, which goes over the six predictors of divorce at no cost to you. These have been known to decrease fighting, rumination, and grudges between you and your loved one. If you want to take it a step farther, really enhance the joy and connection in the most intimate relationship in your life, sign up for my eight-week Making Marriage Work program today at medicinemarriageandmoney.com. Thanks for leaving us a stellar review, subscribing, and sharing with your friends on social media. You have the power to improve someone else's life and marriage simply by sharing this episode. Much love to you and your spouse. You're exactly where you need to be in this moment. Adios, my friends.
The content of this episode is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical or financial advice. The opinions provided on this episode are for are those of myself or the invited guest alone. They do not represent the opinions of any particular institution. Always seek the advice of your physician or financial advisor with any questions you may have of a medical condition or financial plan. This is for your entertainment only.